So most CNC operations occur in a known or a uniform coordinate system. For example, pocketing into a flat surface. Even when we're 3D surfacing, uh, we're generally surfacing on a model that we created in CAD, and so we know where, where the surface exists relative to the, uh, uh, the cutting tool. So FreeCAD Path has a couple of new features that have been recently introduced that can help with that, and this video is all about that. I did the original development on this feature in the fall of 2018 and uh, then I kind of put it aside. I never really finished it up and now it's March of 2020 and thanks to coronavirus I have a little bit of time on my hands, was able to get back to it and uh, so I, I got the code out, I cleaned it up again, updated it and uh, um, I finished it and have merged it into the master branch um, of FreeCAD. Uh, this is going to be a pre-release version of 0 0.19. So if you're uh, uh, running a, a daily build or you build from source, you'll be able to try it out. Of course, the, uh, the feature hasn't gotten much testing yet. So if you're able to give it a try and you, you get something useful out of it, uh, by all means, please post a, a comment below or on the forum and uh, let me know how it worked out for you. Now, this feature also depends heavily on the Linux CNC method uh, for using a touch probe. Uh, I hope in the future this can be improved to work with other kinds of controls and touch probes. Uh, and if you happen to use one, um, you know, in, in something other than Linux CNC and would like to uh, help extend this feature, again, please get a hold of me and we can work together and see if we can make that happen. Many of the 3D printers today have a feature called auto bed leveling. And this doesn't really level the bed. Instead, what it does is it adjusts the G code of the first or second uh, layer of the print to compensate for how the bed might be out of level one way or the other. The way it works is that the printer has a, like an inductive sensor or some sort of a, a touch probe that it uses to detect the bed and it will probe the bed at 9 or 15 points, 12 points, uh, and then it interpolates those to create uh, a, a, an internal map of uh, how the bed is oriented or the, uh, the plane that kind of runs through those, those sampled points. And then it uses that interpolated plane to adjust the G-code for those first couple of layers. Now, with those uh, 3D printers doing that, it's all done internal to the control, almost automatic. Uh, what we're going to do is very similar, but it's going to require two distinct steps. First, we need to generate a probing routine and tell it where to probe and how far. Uh, in order to get the probing data. And then we'll take that data back in and we'll modify uh, a, a, an, an operation in FreeCAD Path uh, and, and then use the, the modified G-code to actually do the, the carving or the, uh, the CNC shaping. For the purposes of this video, I put together a test model. I cut a couple of blocks of oak, uh, roughly lopped off the corners using a, uh, a saw and then used the, the uh, disc and belt sander to uh, make a final curve on it. But this was all done by hand, uh, so it's, it's not a predictable surface at all. I blackened one of the blocks with a torch to give some contrast when we cut it with the CNC. So the goal of this project is going to be to engrave the FreeCAD logo onto the curved surface. So the first step in FreeCAD was to uh, model the, the logo and to adjust the size uh, to correspond to the size that I want it. Um, so in my case, this is about uh, an inch and a half square and I wanted it centered around the zero point. Next, I set up the path job. Uh, and in the job, I have two tool controllers, one for the end mill that I'm gonna use to do the engraving and the other for the probe that I'm gonna use for the touch off. So the stock dimensions of the job in this case are important because they're going to be used to control the probe routine. So I made sure to set the size of my stock to correspond to the real world size of the block. I created an adaptive pocketing operation. But for now I'm going to disable that and focus just on the probing part. And we'll come back to the probing or to the pocketing operation in a bit. So first I create the probe operation. Now this isn't likely to be a frequently used feature, so there's no icon on the main toolbar. 
The task panel for the probe offset operation uh, has a couple of uh, properties that can be adjusted. Um, the offset values correspond to the probe position relative to the spindle. So if your probe isn't directly in line with your spindle, then you'd want to uh, adjust these to uh, compensate for the offset. In my case, my probe it mounts like a regular tool in the spindle, and so I'm going to leave my offset value set to zero. You can adjust the number and the points in each direction to probe. If the surface is relatively flat, just a few points, maybe 9 or 12, will be sufficient. Uh, but if it's a very curved surface or very irregular, you'll want to add more points to give additional resolution. The correct number of points is kind of up to you, depending on what you've got to work with. Now Linux CNC also needs to know where to write the output data, so there's a property to specify the file name. The Depths tab on the operation has the start and final depth, and that's used to control where the probe starts its, uh, its probing move and where it uh, finishes. Of course, it'll only probe as far as uh, until it makes contact with the surface and then retract, but you want to set the final depth to the maximum uh, that you're likely to need to probe. Applying the changes, you can see that the probe moves are rendered in yellow in the 3D window, but otherwise it looks just like a regular toolpath. Then we post-process the job and save the output to an NC file, uh, someplace where the uh, CNC machine can get to it. Then we go over to the mill and uh, load up our uh, probing routine. And we'll want to touch off the probe at Z0 at a known point. So again, for me, my block is going to be centered around 0, 0. So I'm going to jog to the 0, 0 point and make that right over the center of the block. And then I'm going to probe down to the highest point in my curved surface and touch that off at Z equals 0. When I run the probing routine, the data is written to the output file. And now I can get that file back into FreeCAD. So the first thing I'll do is disable the probing operation and re-enable my pocket operation. Next I'm going to select the pocket operation and add a Z-depth correction dress up. And the dress up is very simple. It only has one property that's exposed in the task panel, and that's an input for the file name of our probe data. There are actually two more properties uh, for the dress up, uh, but they're only found on the data tab. Uh, these give fine grain control for uh, the discretization of uh, segments and arcs. For the most part, the default values are probably going to work just fine, but if you're not getting the results you expect, this might be something that you could play with to get a little better resolution. When the dress up is applied, the G code will be reprocessed and the interpolation will be applied. So next we'll post-process the job again and save the output under a new name. And it's back to the CNC. We load uh, the tool, the, the uh, uh, end mill that we're going to use, uh, load up our job, and touch off the end mill at the same z equals zero point um, that we did for the probe. So again, centered around x0, zero, y0. Zero. And then we run the job. So the results I got with this were pretty satisfactory. I'm reasonably happy with it. Uh, it worked out the way that it was intended to. I've only made a few little test parts with this and haven't really done anything very serious. And I don't know how much call there will be for something like this. But if you have ideas for how to improve it, please let me know. If you'd like a closer look at what's going on under the hood of the correction dress up, you can select it in the tree and then use uh, this edit send to Python console and that'll give you a reference called obj in the Python console and if you type obj period you can use the introspection to see the properties that it has and one of these properties is called the interp surface and it'll return that it's a face object if we were to do part dot show and pass in the object surface like that, 
you'll see that it shows uh, the, our, our, the surface that we interpolated here. I'm going to turn off my object and I'll leave the back plot turned on. And then I'm going to scroll down and select the shape in here and go to the view properties and turn the lighting to two-sided. You'll see now that we have the, uh, the actual surface that was generated from our probing data. And you can see how the G-code kind of maps to it. So basically what happens is it moves, the, uh, the dress-up moves through the G-code and at each point in the, in the path it uh, uses the point, basically it pushes down until it hits this interpolated surface and then uses that point for the new, the corrected G-code position. Well, I hope you found that entertaining, and as always, thanks for watching.